Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In the name of Allah, the merciful and the beneficent. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. All praise due to Allah as the creator of all things, the sender of all prophets and messengers, and the revealer of all truth. May the blessing and mercy of Allah Almighty be upon all of us, especially as student of knowledge. Uh, to my respected chair lady and uh, brother Aaron and all other team, all the brothers and sisters, now, it is really a blessing for me today on Friday. It's a good day. A good day for everybody. The day that we believe as a believer that the day Allah Almighty created Adam, the first man, and also he, he was commanded to enter paradise in the same day. And then he committed a sin by eating the forbidden fruit and he was expelled again out from paradise. And then he repented to God and God accepted his repentance. Also, everything happened on Friday. And our Prophet Muhammad said, Friday is a very important day for the believers because we believe that if there is a doom day, doom day will take place on Friday. So normally Friday is very important for the believers. Now, just to share with you our little experience, because based on the Quran, in Surah Al-Hujurat, the chapter of Chambers, there's one chapter called the chapter of Chambers, where Almighty Allah, the true God, said, Ya Yuhannas, O people, he's talking about all of us, not only Arab or Malay, but all mankind. Indeed, we created all of you from one male and one female, Adam and Eve, and from there, we make you into nation and tribes. That's why we are here. Uh, and then the reason that Allah makes us different is not for us to humiliate each other, look down upon each other, to fight and hate each other. No, lita arafu, so that you get to know each other, you complement each other, you share with each other. And the best among you is not because of your name, your color, your race, but those who are more piety to God. So I would say that you, student, a great student because you spend some time to learn the important about religion. Yeah? Even you have Muslim sisters here, you may have some uh, majority are not yet Muslim here with us, but God has opened your heart to take up this special uh, knowledge that is very, very important for humanity. Me as your brother in Islam, I was born as from a Chinese family, a Buddhist family. Because from young, I like to go into spiritual things. I like the spiritual things. People talk about ghosts, about devil, about the, 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 the spirit. I love to go through all the spiritual experience. So from Buddhism, I was trying. I served the, the temple most of the time when I'm free after school. I would like to be in the temple environment, to chant, to be with the good people. I would say the people in the temple, majority are good people. You know? They are thinking about how to purify themselves, how to control their desire. Because as a human, we all have desire. The desire to do so many things, especially when you're young, you like to do what you think is good for you. You don't care about whether it, is, it will benefit you or you will benefit others or not. You don't care. Because youngster normally, they are very, uh, I would say that, they like to try everything. They are very energetic, very hyperactive. So they are very brave. Young people normally are very brave. You know? They like to do what they think, you know, I think is good for me, I will do it. Whether it may hurt your parents' feeling, it may hurt other people, you just don't care about that. You just feel for yourself in general. Yeah? And that's why you see a lot of youngsters today, if you are not careful with your teenage life, then you will waste a lot of your energy doing something that do not benefit you. You get involved in drugs, smoking, drinking, a lot of things that at the end of the day, you will suffer more than anyone else. But being a young environment always is like that. No, it's good time. Let's have some happy day. Everything happy, 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 you know. But when you have problem, you have to suffer by yourself. So, but my, my experience as a Buddhist, I, I, because I'm inclined to all the spiritual things, so I use my, my youth, my young uh, 
I would say my young age to explore more on this value. Yeah, from Buddhism to Christianity and I end up to Islam. Now why from Buddhist to Christianity? Uh, you know as a Buddhist, in Buddhism also they remind us about the importance of believing in the karma. If any Buddhist here they will know. Karma means you must believe thing that has been fated to you. Anything that God has fated upon you will take place. So why you have to believe in that? So that when something goes wrong, you are not going to blame anybody. You are ready to accept it. When you have that belief, you have less problem. Because you have that belief. You try to be the best, something bad happened, I accept it. Yeah? And I will try to improve. I will learn from what I experienced. That means something that bad happened to you in life, it is also a reminder for you. A reminder for you to learn from your experience. And that's why we believe, spiritual value always remind us that when you believe in God, when you have that belief, the attachment, you will never be alone. There is always a way out for you to overcome your problem. And problem will not become problem anymore when you believe in God. But when you don't believe in God, problem will be a problem. A minor thing become major. Because we understand problem as problem, problem. But from the religious point of view, problem is knowledge. Problem is wisdom. Problem is information. Do you understand that, children? The girls and the boy? Why? Because you learn through problem. You have headache. Now you learn. What kind of medication is good for the headache? Now you get... You experience it, you take Panadol, oh, now you got, oh, now my headache is gone. Now give you another information that in the future, if other people have headache, it is no problem. I have a medication for you. But if you have never gone through the experience, you do not know what to say. I have a toothache. Now somebody recommend you to a dentist. Oh, this is a good one. No, I don't have pain. No, she is a very good dentist. Then there is another information for you. So next time your friend have the same problem, oh, I recommend you to the clinic. You see, these are how you look at life. So being a youngster, you know, we love a lot to do a lot of things. Yeah? We love our freedom. Our freedom is borderless normally. Yeah? But religion do guide you. Religion will always there to remind you. Anything you do, you must be careful. Religion is there to alert you that everything there is a limit. Everything there is border. There's a border. That's why the Islamic term they call hudud. You remember this term hudud? Any one of you remember the term hudud? Hudud law. Do you understand what is hudud law? Anyone understand what is hudud? All of you are Malaysian of course. Eh? Since you are so far behind about what is happening in our community, you know, it's good to know what is happening because religion actually gives us put more value in life. And some youngsters like all of you, maybe I do not know, I don't have the experience. I love spiritual things, so I believe in God in a very young age. Yeah. In a very young age, I do believe there is a supreme power. Yeah. Spiritual thing is something to do with God. So I have no problem about that. But today's world, there are youngsters who just don't believe. But when they have problem, they'll call God. My God. When they have no problem, they forget God. It's like when you have no problem, you forget your father. When you have problem, dad, <laughs> I'm, I'm same problem, I need 50 ringgit. You know? <laughs> when everything is okay, you forget your dad. And some problem, you remember your dad. And also, when you uh, learn about a balanced you know, development, because religion always reminds you to have a balanced development. That means physically you must develop, mentally you must develop, spiritually you must develop. It's a balanced development. When you have this value to all the student knowledge, wherever you go, you find a lot of peace to yourself, because 
the value will teach you not to do or say anything that cause harm to yourself and not to do or say anything that cause harm to others. Okay, we all believe that religious is something that uh, very personal yeah? and sometimes people say we don't need religion to guide us. This is how we always feel. But we underestimate religion. Do you understand the word religion? As student of knowledge, do you know? Because you are learning about psychology, you're talking about yeah, how people think. Do you understand, understand the term religion? How about the boys here? You understand the term religion? Do you think you have a religion? What do you say? Share with me. Do you think you have a religion? No, not yet. How about you girls here? Do you think you have a religion? Or oh, brother there, do you think you have a religion? We are not sure something. How about the sister here? Do you think you have a religion? Sometimes we dare not even say anything. You know? We are worried we may say the wrong thing. <laughs> now, this word, a lot of humans today are very confused because of words. They are confused because of terms. They do not know what they are saying sometimes. When you say the word religion, the Islamic term said ad-din. The Islamic term, they said din. When you translate into English, they say religion. The real understanding of religion, I don't believe that anyone who live in this planet world have no religion. I don't believe in that. I talked to the Soviet in Russia, I talked to the communists in China. I said, do you have religion? Oh, we, we, we are very free. We believe in ourselves. <laughs> okay, good. By believing in yourself, there is a religion there. Do you have rule and regulation in this university? Do you have rule and regulation? Can you just come in and join the program or you must apply? Must you apply for it? Okay. Now, when you want to drive a car, do you have to follow the road's rule and regulation? When there is a traffic light, say, the color red is on, what do you do? You go? You go or you stop? You stop. When there is green, you stop or you go? You have to go. Why? Why do you do that? Because there is the rule. <laughs> See, religion means do and the don't. There's nobody who lives in this world without do and don't. Whether you have your own do and don't or you have to follow the divine do and don'ts. But I personally believe through my young life from the age of 13, I start to explore a lot of spiritual things. If people say there's ghost here, I try to go there. I want to experience whether ghost is real or not or just a drama, man-made ghost. You know? Sometimes we humans are more... Yeah, more worse than the ghost, you know. I think if the ghost look at us, he'll run away. Not here, no. We run away because we have this uh, problem, the fear, unnecessary fear, you know. But anyhow, that is my experience. Then I realized actually, the spiritual being is always there. Before we were created by God, through the religious like that, now, there is jinn, there is angel. They were created earlier than us. Whether you believe in or not, you can experience it by yourself if you want. You want to know, I show you one simple experience. Yeah. At night time, at night time, you just stand in a dark area where there's a light. There's a light there and you're alone. Now you start to walk and you start to just look at the shadow. Look at the shadow. You'll find there are many shadows. It's not only you are there. Every one of us is not alone. You have your karin, you have your friend. Either he's a good one or a bad one. The bad one you call the jinn, the good one you call the angels. Every one of us have. And if you are good in communicating with the spiritual world, you can talk to him. If you are ready, you know. 
If you are not ready, then you don't try it by yourself. You get hysteria and then it's not good for you. But this thing, if you want to explore, you can. This is not something that we make up, but you can do it by yourself. Just be ready for it, that's all. I have tried this many, many times. Because I, like I said to you, I love the spiritual thing. I went into trance before because I want to have experience the gene coming to you. Yeah, but you have some somebody who is there to help you out in case he come in and don't go out. Then you may have problem. So you must have somebody who are who know about this to be there to help you out. Yeah. Now why I feel that the, through my humble experience, religion is so important because religion. Uh, Make me a balanced person. Religion taught me a lot of good values. Example, the value of you must respect the elders. How bad the elders are, you must respect and honor them. And also you must love the young one. You must value your life. Your life is a trust. You must take good care of yourself. So religious always is there to guide you, do this, don't do this. When you believe in this value and you follow the ruling, it's like a doctor or nutrition tell you, you do this, do this, do this, don't take this. And if you follow, how do you feel, brother and sister? Do you feel healthier? You feel healthier. You protect yourself from a lot of other problems because you are careful with your intake. Your health depends on your intake. Whatever you eat, you are who you eat. If you want to be a junkies, you eat junk food, then later on you become junkies. You don't care anymore. But people who value life, they don't go for that kind of food. No. Alhamdulillah, I was, well, when I was young, I never go for all junky food. Until today. KFC may be two, three times per year. There's also when people invite me, not I go by myself. Pizza, all this because I am I am not that kind of person. I value home cooked food, especially mothers who prepare food for you because they prepare out of love. They give you the best, even nasi goreng also best quality food at home. The one outside, they smile at you. This is commercial smile because they want your money. Then they go for the kill. But I'm not saying that you can't eat. Say, what is this? Man talking about no, this one cannot, that one cannot. no, you can, but everything it should be balanced, because to all the young brothers and sisters, you must remember, they said hell is wealth. You can have all the knowledge, you can have all the money, but if you are not healthy, do you enjoy life? Will you enjoy life? No. So don't sacrifice your health for anything. Be kind to yourself. So I believe strongly that we need to understand religion. Because when you have religion in you, you can see when you have problem, whatever problem you encounter, religion will show you a way out. You will not get, uh, I will say that, no, you, will, you don't end committing suicide. You see, nowadays there are young people committing suicide for what? We do not know. Pressure. What kind of pressure? People don't come and force you to kill yourself. No. It's just mental pressure. Yeah. And then the environment yeah, also pressure you. But because in, when you are strong with God, when you are having a good relation with God, because you always communicate with God, that's what I say in Islam, we pray five times a day. We don't only pray once in a week. Of course, there are some Muslims, only they call Friday Muslim. They only pray on Friday. Other day, they are chuti, you know, they are free. But as a good person, they have communication. Like how you eat every day. How many times do you eat per day? To the young sister here. How many times minimum? Breakfast, okay. Lunch, okay. You have a break again, tea. No tea. You have dinner, yes. At least three. Breakfast, lunch, dinner. But normally you still have some you know, break here and there. And, uh, so far. Why you need to eat so many times? It's just to make sure that you, know, you give enough energy to your body to do what you have to do when you are young because you need a lot of energy, you move a lot. But at the same time, 
your mind also needs some food. What is the food of the mind? What is the food of the mind? Come on. Yeah? Knowledge. Knowledge is the food of the mind. If you are not careful, you allow every knowledge to corrupt you. Knowledge can corrupt you. Especially Mr. Google and all this IT. They can send everything. You do not know who is behind this. They keep on giving you information that corrupt you. Sometimes you don't know what's happening. You know? So you don't go, don't jump into conclusion. You can, I hardly go to all this area. Because I only get knowledge from people who I know. Not just from anywhere, but no problem. You can go through all this. Just an experience. You know? But I can just go through, but I'm not going to believe. Until I have a strong evidence to believe. And then what is the food of the soul? Do we have a soul inside us? Do you believe there's a soul inside your body, brother? Yeah, you must believe. If you don't believe, you have a problem to yourself. You, know? you must believe there's a soul, that's why you are alive here. When the soul is taken out, then you know, the body can't move anymore. Now, the soul also needs some food. What is the food of the soul? It's prayer. Is prayer. You have to learn how to communicate with God. And there is the knowledge of the soul. So when you have this balance, you feed your body with the right food, you give your mind the right knowledge, and you connect your soul with God, I believe that you will have a happy life. People have problems, you know how to solve your problems. I wouldn't say you have no problem. You know, I've been traveling around the globe. I've seen the people with so many problems. But after we're talking to them for half an hour, now they can see like, oh, it's so easy. Yes. Next time if you still have problem, you can try and communicate with us. Then we'll show you how to overcome your problem. How to look positive towards something that is negative. So this is very important through my humble experience. And when you have the understanding of religion to all the brothers and sisters, you can travel anywhere and you can be with anybody and people will love you. People will respect you. Why? Because religion emphasizes the importance of discipline. How you talk to people, how you want to visit somebody, how do you communicate with people, how do you respect a person, how to do business, anything you do in life, if you are guided by religion, it disciplines you. When you have good discipline, who hate you? Have you been in Japan? Are any Japanese sisters here? No, yeah? Have you been to Japan before? Anyone been to Japan? Not yet. It's good to go to Japan. See how people respect the Japanese today. Why? They are so disciplined. Very disciplined, very clean people. You can sleep in the toilet, you know, very clean. And they take pride in whatever they do. They take pride. Even they are cleaner, they love to clean, not like our cleaner. You know. Our cleaner, you go in, you wet it, they come in, and they dry it. You go in, you wet it again, they go in, they dry it again. After that, they say, let it wet. We don't have to do any. Well, toilet is toilet. Toilets must be wet, let it get wet. But they, they are not going to clean anymore. But you see in Japan, Masha, every time you go in, he come out, somebody will go in. And they are not going to scream at anybody. They, are not, they take pride. They keep on cleaning. You see, it's a discipline. It's a discipline that we must have. But with the religious guideline, you will see the value the supreme value in the religion. Tell you to respect everybody, honor everybody, human, animals, environment, everything you must yeah, be kind to the, uh, the environment. Then the environment will be kind to you. It's like what religion said. If you love yourself, you want to be respect, you want to be honored, so you must respect and honor other people. That's why we say, 
always use mirror. Don't use what spectacle. Don't wear spec. Oh, uh, it's okay for you to wear. So it's not haram. Yeah? Because when you wear spec, you just look at other people. But if you sit mirror or mirror, then you look at yourself. So when you look at yourself, why mirror become the best friend? Why? Do you know mirror is a best friend? Do you know that, brother and sister? How many of us have been talking to yourself? Hardly, yeah. We want to stay in front of the mirror. The the brother will just stay two minutes, three minutes, call us. Nothing to to do extra, yeah. But for the sister, they have more thing to look. You know, they have to think what color of dress they want to dress today. So they got to do some touching up here and there. But the man is very simple, you know. Water or just one cream, buy cream, call us. Yeah, for the woman, you know, so many cream, you know. This part, do another cream. This part, another cream. The small face have so many cream. You waste a lot of time just looking at yourself, but it's okay because you love yourself. But what I'm saying, why mirror is your best friend? When you have problem, when you cry in front of the mirror, do the mirror laugh at you? You experienced that before? You can try. When you cry, the mirror look at the mirror. When you cry, this smile. How do you feel when you're having problem? You're crying in front of your friend. Your friend smile at you. That means they don't have feeling towards you. So mirror don't betray you. It's your own reflection. So when you look at mirror, it's good for you to remind yourself: Do I want people to respect me? Do I want people to smile at me? Then, if you want people to smile at you, you learn how to smile back. Then you see the reflection. For the young brothers and sisters, I will encourage all of you yeah, to enhance yourself in this value. It's very important. And if you try to act upon the good value, you will see wherever you go, people will love you and respect you because you know their value, you know their religion, you know how to respect them, yeah, you know their value, you know how to visit them, how to enter their house. Like the Muslim, you know, when you enter the Muslim house, you don't go with your shoes. Why? Because the Muslim will use their home to pray. Where other people, you can use their shoes because they are not yeah, involved in the prayer. So all these things is very very important. If you want to invite a friend who are Muslim to have food, where should you invite them? To the bar, nightclub. You know, it's not right. You should invite them to a place that you know that is, they feel good and relaxed. If you invite a Buddhist, a good Buddhist brother, do you invite them for Kentucky or pizza? Do you do that? That means you have no respect to him. If he is telling you, "I'm a Buddhist, I'm a practicing Buddhist," a practicing Buddhist go for what? Vegetarian. So you want to invite him for lunch? Make sure go for vegetarian, organic shop. You make him very happy. They know that you have value. You, know, you cannot bring him to fish head curry. You know, what is it? You, know, you enjoy fish head curry, he will just eat veggie. That means you don't understand people's value. You understand that, inshallah? It's just like religion will teach you the discipline of if you want to be a successful student, you want to be a good student, what should you do, sisters? You just have to Respect your teacher. Whatever the teacher is talking to you, you must listen. You don't know, you ask him. When the teacher is lecturing, you cannot just talk among yourself. Meaning you have so disrespect. The same go to your parent when the parent is talking to you. Listen. A successful student is a good listener. You don't understand, you ask. But if you don't want to listen, nobody can force you. Nobody can force you. You come and go. They come and go. Finish. So may Allah guide us. May Allah help us. Like what the sister said. Yeah, I just share with you the importance of my childhood when I was young. Why I put more time learning about religion because religion gave me a lot of yeah, wisdom, yeah, information. So now we are open for the second section for the Q and A. If any question from the brothers or sister. You're welcome to forward your question. Can I
Young people should have a lot of questions, yes. In the beginning, of course, I may not know the difference, differences so much in the beginning. I just want to experience more. I've experienced Buddhism where there's a lot of don'ts. You know? If you talk about true Buddhism, yeah, true Buddhism will teach you the value of number one, belief in karma. Number two, you must remember the sukkha and the dukkha. That means in life there's a lot of suffering, you must prepare for that. So when you are prepared for the truth of suffering, you will not suffer anymore. So you must be humble, that's why to train yourself to control your desire, you don't eat just any food, you go vegetarian, you control your hairstyle, you go bald, you, cons you, cons you, you try to minimize you know, your kind of dressing, don't let the dress, the government change your attitude, so you dress very humbly. Yeah? Like the Muslim wear the ihram. You know? Why you do that? Actually, they're teaching you how to control your desire. You know, sometimes our dress can change our attitude. Do you believe in that? Do you believe in that, brother? You look at the policemen. When they wear the uniform, how do they feel? They feel they have authority. After that, they change their uniform, they go and rob people. You see that the attitude, the uniform can change you. Dress can change you. If you wear smart, nicely, so your behavior also change. But if you wear rugged and all, all your, your behavior also will change. So Buddhism train you through that. Be humble. Control your desire. Be the master of desire. But there are so many don'ts, of course. This no, this no, this no. And they also want you to be so humble that they want you to go and back. Even you can work. You are healthy. But they want you to take a bowl and go door to door and ask for some help in the form of money, in the form of food. And you see, most of the monks are very healthy. Maybe they're the Shaolin master there. But they still got to go and back. Why they do that? It's just to train yourself to be humble. But later on, I feel that I need to know more about other religion. So I migrate to Christianity. Christianity seems to be very uh, accommodative for young people because everything okay. Everything goes. You believe in Lord, Lord is your savior, Kalas. You can do anything, drinking, no problem, everything free, everything free. Almost everything you can do at the point of time. But once in a while you believe in Jesus, your Savior, Lord, you are safe. So it, it, it really made me feel, oh, this is very good. And I was a Buddhist, this one, no, 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 don't, 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 don't do. But when I come to Christian, okay, okay, no problem, good time, drink, no. Buddhism, you can't drink, you can't gamble, you can't do anything, no woman. You know that, for, for, uh, I mean, for those who really want to go into Buddhism. But in Christianity, almost everything goes, party here, party there, singing here, singing there. Everything goes. Valentine, man, so many things. Later on, I said, uh, I think I want to know more about this religion, Islam. After I became a Muslim, then I look back to Buddhism and Christianity, I found that all this religion seems to be the same. Teaching people to have a good communication with God and also do what God wants you to do, to follow the commandment for your own safety. I feel there is no difference to my humble experience. So I feel good. At first, I just try, but later on, when I became a Muslim, I look in the story of Jesus, story of Moses, story of Abraham, story of Adam, all is in the Quran. Then you start to link, you have a chapter of Virgin Mary, talking about Virgin Mary. I feel that Islam is here to cover almost everything that was not covered in the early scripture. So I don't feel losing anything. It's just like it's complementing. 
re-strengthening. That's how I feel. And it's good. Now I can talk to my sibling who are Christian better. To the extent they say, oh, oh, we never heard about this. Now my <laughs> this is knowledge. We share some information, no problem. I can talk to my Buddhist friend better. I say, you have been learning so much. Say, no, no. Actually, I'm learning from the Quran now. And Quran is telling us about what happened to the early generation, the early people before us. Yeah. That's my experience. Any other question from the there's one brother, any sister who would like to ask anything? I do, I do uh, acknowledge that, that the value should be the same. Because all religion want you to be good. And all religion actually is the same religion. Teaching people to communicate to the Creator. But what happened through history, I give you some example. Did Gautama Buddha claim that he is God? He is the son of God. No. He did not allow any of his disciples to even worship him. But did he worship God? If you look back there, he said, he always pray. He meditate. He prostrate. If you look at the life history of Buddhism, he do that. That means he is in communication with someone. Christianity, you look at the history of Christianity of Jesus. Jesus never claimed that I am the son of God. He never claimed. It, it is Paul who put his, this word into the Bible and said that. I am God. Jesus said, my father and your father is one. Don't call me father because my father and your father is one. And he said that I am just a messenger of God, a prophet, a human like all of you. I eat, I sleep, I drink, I, I fall sick. But I am the son of Mary. But what happened to the Christian today after some time not when Jesus was alive, not when the twelve disciples was there, but later on. They start to say that Jesus is not just a human, but he is God. The Holy Father, the Holy Son, and the Holy Ghost. And the concept of Trinity comes in. But we are looking at it carefully. If you say Jesus is God, we all know Jesus is from the family tree of Abraham. Those who learn the Bible, they know. No Christian can ignore Abraham. They know that Jesus is from this line, the lineage of Abraham. Abraham has two wives. The first one, Sarah, the second one, Hagar. From Sarah, he had one offspring, Isaac. And from uh, Hajar, he had one called Ismael. And from here, Isaac and to Prophet Jesus. Ismael and to Prophet Muhammad. They are no stranger, they are twin brothers. Now, if you say that Jesus is God, what happened to Abraham? Did Abraham call Jesus as his Lord? God only exists in the time of Jesus. What about earlier than that, the time of Moses? Do Moses call Jesus as his Lord? Because we know Jesus came after Moses. Jesus also came after Gautama Buddha. So through my humble experience, I found out the difference now is because the teaching of all these great people is not being followed yeah, properly anymore. People do a lot of changes. If you look, I give you some simple example. In Buddhism, pork is forbidden. No eating of pork. In Christianity, in the Bible said, the flesh of the swine is unclean for you. Every religion said, no eating of pork including Islam. What do all of us follow today? The only group of people that stay away from pork until today is the Muslim. Even Hinduism, you cannot eat pork. Hinduism, all of vegetarian. I mean, if you're talking about the origin, but 
hardly anybody follow. This is just an example. The religion is the same. Nobody said they are God, they know who they are. But later on, the followers is starting, it's like Buddhism. Now people are worshipping him. Yeah. It's like, no, he taught them to worship. No, you just follow his teaching. That's why you see the Muslims don't worship any prophet. They believe in all the prophets, but they don't worship any one of them. They love all the prophets that they cannot worship any one of them. You understand that, sis? So that is the difference today. If not, we are all the same. Because all prophets came with the same mission. To remind the people to have a connection with God Almighty. But if any Christian they believe is God, that is our belief. Nobody can change your belief if that's what you believe. You see? It's like the pagan, the orang asli, they believe in other spirit to be their God. So, in China, when you say, uh, you know the, 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 the Chinese in China, when they say Allah, you know how they, they address Allah, the Muslim God, Allah? They address Tian Kong. When you say Tian Kong, or in Hokkien, they say Ti Kong. Ti Kong, they know ah, this is the biggest one. Because you cannot escape from the sky wherever you go. <laughs> you know, the sky is, you have this God, that God. But the Tian Kong Kalas is cover everything. That is good. I, I like the sister if we have more time to discuss about this, it's good. Just for knowledge sake, it's nothing to say that, no? We are blaming anybody, no? Just for knowledge is good. But it's very important not to ignore history. We don't know anything without going through it back to history. So did Abraham at any time when he called to God, do he mention Jesus' name? Brother? Yep. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, may, may God bless us and also may God guide us. The important thing I'd like to share to all the good brothers and sisters here, because you show interest in the spiritual thing, you don't lose anything anyhow. The more you learn, actually, it's just information is good for you. Yeah? But what, lastly, the thing that I'd like all of you to do, being human, when you are free, anytime you are free, just pray to God and ask God to guide you. You need guidance. We cannot say, I know, yeah, I know how to guide myself. You need guidance. Just be humble. You don't lose anything. Do that. One day, God will guide us because you ask, you ask guidance from Him. So may Allah help us, inshallah. Yeah. And to all the Muslim sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. May the peace of God be upon all of us. Thank you.